Welcome to the Wash Down Podcast, episode number 84. And tonight our guest is Katie Hannenberger. Uh, Katie was a police officer for six years and she has a degree in um, a Bachelor of Fine Arts uh, in Interior Design. But the reason that she's here tonight is to talk about the Monkey Brain Art Project. Um, She is the Director of Artist Engagement and a Warrior Art Instructor um, with them. Uh, We had a great conversation. I learned a lot. Uh, I think it's a great program. Um, So you guys get out there and support them. Uh, I hope everybody enjoys uh, the podcast as much as I did making it. So... Uh, without further ado, here's episode 84 uh, with guest Katie Hannenberger from the Monkey Brain Art Project. <laughs> well, see, that's what I do. That's, I know. That's my job. It's the whole, hey, uh, come talk about stuff. <laughs> yes. And I, like, once you get me started, I'm good at talking. Yeah. It's just getting, getting started. <laughs> just getting there? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, I 100% agree. Whenever I first started doing this um Mm -hmm. with the guys that we i was doing it with at the time we would get together and be like okay we need to shoot an episode okay what are we going to talk about crickets (laughs) (laughs) that sounds about right well we're going to talk about mental health but what specifically about mental health how do we get there (laughs) yeah no yeah we're going to take the long way around okay because we're all long way around talkers yeah and then we're also like well, monkey brain, we're like this topic and that one, and then this one, and then back to that one, and then over there, and yeah. Mike Sorry. a little bit closer yes. to your face. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and tilt it just down a little bit, because it's kind of pointing at your nose. Okay. There you go. Okay. That'd yeah. be better. Yeah. So yeah, we go, um, and it happens in class all the time, too. Like, we'll go one thought, and then the next thought, and then we'll go back to another one, and then like, yeah. Yeah. You ever seen that movie, Up? Oh, yes. With a dog? Yes. Squirrel! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shiny things is Uh kind of our deal. (laughs) (laughs) Or we always say, like, the monkey mind thing. We always say, like, the monkey going from, like, one branch to the next, to the vine, to the, like, through the jungle, and you never know where it's going to go. Yeah. (laughs) Nothing is linear. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Katie, thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So why don't... You tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into uh, the whole monkey brain that you referenced okay. already. Yes. So I'm an artist, um, full-time artist. I am formerly a police officer. Um, that's kind of where my part with monkey brain comes in. Um, we call ourselves warriors because we don't delineate between veteran and first responder and whatnot, whoever we serve. Um, so I <clears throat> started off with an art degree, a Bachelor of Fine Arts. As a commercial interior designer. <laughs> I, I know. it's like, Which leads right into law enforcement. <laughs> I know, exactly. And then when I got laid off, um, I was not necessarily sad about getting laid off because I knew I was, I already knew my path. I was going back to school for law enforcement um, and I was on the force for six years and then needed a break. So I took a break and it's been six years. Well. <laughs> so, and I'm not going back. Like, it's just, I'm yeah. on new part of my path so well and there's nothing wrong with that exactly at all and you know there's a lot of it seems in our career fields yes there can be a lot of that whole I don't want to call it hate but you Mm -hmm. know people that leave before their retirement time or whatever and it's kind of looked down on and you know I've been guilty of it in the past but Mm -hmm. ever since stuff happened you know and I went through my journey and got to the point where I'm at it's like you know what this job really, it's just not for everyone. Mm-hmm. And if you recognize that, it's not your calling, it's not your passion. Yeah. To go do something else. It's, it's, there's no shame in that. Not at all. No. Know? And it was like, I loved it when I was in. I loved doing what I did. It just got to the point where, like, flipping on that siren didn't give me a rush anymore. And I was like, ooh, like, oh, it's just another day. Like, yeah. it, got, it got to that point for me. And I, Number one, I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie, and I need that kick. <laughs> like, I <laughs> Hence need the that... coffee all day earlier. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, I also don't like keep very good hours, so if I'm up early in the morning, I need to get to the coffee to get me through the day. But yeah. um, which that goes along like I was night shift for a while, and then I was day shift for a while. So it the oh, the yeah. fun 
shift work that went along with it. Yeah. Yeah. That totally jacked the circadian rhythm completely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I've always been a night person. So it's like going to the day shift screws up with my sleeping pattern. Yeah. So I don't know. Just keep me on night all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, not me. I Nine o'clock. I want to be in bed. I don't mind getting up at four yeah. five. That's fine. But no, you're crazy. Yeah, no, <laughs> I just, I can't do it. I uh -huh. start fading. Oh, no. No, I'm like up till like two, three. <laughs> oh, I can't do that. <laughs> but I'm usually in my studio like creating. So that's kind of my, well, my creative time. Yeah. Yeah. I get so, that. Yeah. So I, uh, sorry, bed uh, out for six years in July. So it's weird because I'm at that point of like, I was in for six years and now I've been out for six years. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. For whatever reason, it's like playing weird tricks in my mind of like, I don't know. Now it's time to do something different? <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, I've always kind of been one that I have that thing that I do. Like, I have always had my art. Mm -hmm. My art has always been there. Um, I've always had my business, just in different little capacities. But um, I don't know what the deal is of like six years in, six years out. I don't know. It's just there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I wish I could uh, give you some significance of that, but <laughs> yeah. I have I have no clue. Yeah. I've been in for 18 years as of last week. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. No, that's that's awesome. I think to be able to stay in that long, like stay with it that long, it shows a lot of, I don't know, drive. But... Either that or just I really hate change. <laughs> See, and I don't mind change. Like I am, I don't know, change it sometimes can excite me, but because I'm one of those, I just like the different. Yeah. Like I don't, my schedule is not same day to day. Yeah. I do different things all the time. So. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, let's see. Got out. Um, I have had my own business for a while. I had a, I had a fabric or a clothing business for a little while. Um, that was fun. <laughs> Um, and then, and then I just went to, I stepped in fully in my art because that's kind of always been one of my things I love to do. And it's one thing that has always helped me to kind of come back to center. So okay. stepped into that and been doing it full time. Um, kind of the starving artist a little bit, but not quite. <laughs> uh, but then, um, so monkey brain, I got involved with that. April of 21, when I met the founder um, in the parking lot at the CrossFit gym. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> yeah. So. Have you, have you watched some old episodes? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> Probably a good thing. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, I, I tried not to because like coming on, I was like, I don't want to know like what I'm at get it walking into <laughs> mm -hmm. there's there's lots of crossfit jokes <laughs> okay well i do crossfit yeah. so throw I, them my way it it only took you uh where are we at seven minutes to mention that that's <laughs> Yes. Slow clap almost. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, seven is a lucky number, right? Absolutely. I mean. <laughs> um so yeah, I met Gary and it was one of those things that so I went through the battle with him and that's how I got to the CrossFit part. Um, okay. I, I did the 90 day program at, um, the Hill. I don't know if you've heard of the Hill. Uh -huh. So, okay. Um, with the battle within the Hill does a 90 day program. Um, and I went and I signed up, did my thing. And a couple of the guys from the battle within were meeting with my coach. And then there was this other guy there and I was like, okay, I know everyone else at the table, but who's that cat? Um, and coach Josh, he said, oh yeah, that's Gary. He's an artist. And I'm like, okay, I should probably meet him at some point, not even thinking anything else of it. Yeah. And then as I left from my meeting and walked out to my car, Gary is sitting in his car, like looking at his phone and I knocked on the window. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> like, this is me. I do weird stuff, like whatever. Um, and I was like, either number one, I'll meet the guy and I'll talk with him or number two, it'll be really weird and I'll never see him again. True. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So we talked and he... Um, yeah, I'm an artist. This is kind of what my wife and I are doing. Um, talked about Monkey Brain that they had started. So they started it January of 21. I met him April of 21. So we hadn't started classes. Like it hadn't been location established, anything like that. It's yeah. just, here's the idea. This is what we're doing. We're going to do classes. I'm like, okay, I'll take class. Cool. And then it was 
they called a couple days later and I was like, okay, I'll volunteer. Cool. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, I'll help with like setting stuff up and I'll, you know, be a teacher and I do the social media and the website and I'm director of art, artist <laughs> engagement. So it's like, I wear all these hats now and I'm, uh -huh. I'm like in it. <laughs> well, that's great. You got a passion for it. So. I do. I do. Yeah. It brings together the art and it brings together the law enforcement. So, um, I definitely found my tribe with it which I kind of always looked for after I got out of law enforcement. Yeah, that's, so, you yeah. know, the common theme of whenever people get out of these professions, yes. they lose that tribe almost. Oh, and yeah. And so they're always looking for the next, mm -hmm. you know, a sense of belonging maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah. a group. Well, and it's the people who understand you. Yeah. Because, like, those of us in law enforcement, fire, police, like, whatever, veterans – we're kind of different. Uh, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> nope. We're totally normal. I know. All of us. <laughs> we are the same as everybody else in society. Um, well, and my the, the thing that kind of messed with my head a little bit, too, is my husband's also a police officer. So, like, he still had his people. Mm -hmm. And I left a field, the field and I didn't have my people. Like, I could try and message or text with the, my guys on my shift, but, they, you know, they're yeah. busy. Yeah. Okay. Understandable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It and you know, I found that out kind of early in my career on the fire department. Yeah. Of you know you you work at this shift at this station and yep. you guys are all your best friends mm -hmm. and then somebody goes to a different shift a different station yes. and then all of a sudden it's like that slow fade mm -hmm. where you, all of a sudden you just yeah man I haven't heard from that guy in like six months yeah. Like, we might pass on shift change, yeah, but, like... but that's it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, totally, I totally get it. Yeah. So, but with Monkey Brain, it's, like, I found that group of people again. Plus, anytime we have people go through our classes, I meet more people who are similar, you know, who get it. Yeah. So, it's it's been nice to have that. Um, and then getting to know it with other people from other uh, veterans organ or veteran service organizations um and everything like it's it's still the people who get us right who and we get them yeah so we're still all just kind of like our tribe is just growing yeah. which is awesome it's just a bigger community exactly yeah and yeah. we're kind of figuring out that we are kind of one big community even if we're absolutely blue or red or green or whatever color you want to assign yeah yeah so there's more similarities than there are differences yes yes and it's all like the trauma brain like, mm -hmm. that's one thing I've really come to understand, and I never quite got until I went through the battle within. I know you had the guys talk about that in yeah. another episode, but um, I went through that program, and that's where I was like, okay, I'm not different. I mean, I am, but it's because of what I've been through and what I've seen changed the physicality of my brain. Mm -hmm. So that's just, it's not that it's wrong. No. It's just what it is. And that's why, like, I'm the only, I was the only law enforcement in, fam in my family. There hadn't been any law enforcement. And, like, military was my aunt and uncles, my grandparents. And that was it. So when I told my parents I was going into law enforcement, my mom. <laughs> oh, I love her. <laughs> mom was a teacher. Um, and her response to me was like, so you're going to sit at a desk and that's it, right? I was like, well, my desk will be in a car and all, like... <laughs> No, mom. I'm sorry. I love you. Love you dearly. So it was like, it, I now look back and go, okay, well, the response of like, I didn't talk about calls with them because they didn't, not that they didn't get it, but I wanted to shield them, I yeah. think. Well, um, I mean, secondary trauma is a exactly. real thing. Yes. And that was one of the things that, you know, going in, I didn't know. They didn't talk about it in the academy. They told us, yeah, people won't get it who aren't in. I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> yeah. They, by and large, it seems like the academy process, yeah. um, they don't do a real good job of explaining certain things that, yeah. it, you know, and I get it. I mean, they have a limited amount of time mm -hmm. to impart a lot of knowledge yes. on very pertinent things. But there are some things that I feel maybe should be touched on a little bit more and yeah. the mental health aspect of it and even just the lifestyle mm -hmm. or you know what to expect they really 
they gloss over that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I went to the Academy in Minnesota and they touched on it a little bit as far as like, I do remember them saying when you're in, you will start to only have friends who are in. Make sure you find people and are friends and hang out with people who are not. Great in. advice. Yeah. And that was one thing I remember. And even um, when I got out, I thought about that and I was like, I started to try and think of who I had. Well, first of all, uh, when I got out, I had only been down here like two years in in Missouri. So mm -hmm. I didn't know a lot of people other than people who I worked with. Yeah. And my husband was also police, so it was people who we worked with or other police officers or fire or whatever. Yeah. So it was one of those things like, oh, crap, now I'm an adult and I have to try and find friends. <laughs> 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 like, how do you do that as an adult? It just you know knock on people's windows in the gym <laughs> parking lot i mean yeah sometimes that works <laughs> um, i mean it seems like you have a formula so yeah. i know i just need to like sit in the parking lot and see who comes around <laughs> slightly creepy Katie. i know i know and like it's down in the crossroads so that would not be the brightest uh, idea no no that's uh no yeah you, no <laughs> uh -uh. nope yeah <laughs> Well, I, but now also being out and going through some of my healing journey, I actually am more willing to talk to people now. Because before it was like, Psh, I don't know you. Very closed off. Very. I was, and I didn't realize I was closed off because it's it was normal. Funny how that happens, isn't it? I know. Yeah. Yeah. The personality change that you don't realize until yes. it gets, you get slapped in the face with it. Oh my it. gosh. It, like, I look back to who I was when I was a police officer and my mom, I was, so I'm from Minnesota. My parents still live there. I try and get back there like once a month because my friends are all there. And that was one thing when I came, moved down here, I told my husband, I said, I will be going to Minnesota and you will just go with her or stay here. <laughs> <laughs> um, At least you gave him a choice. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, but where was I going with that? See, monkey brain, I tell you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. My mom had made a comment about, like, so I worked up in Minnesota for four years before I moved down here. But when I moved down here, she said when she came down to visit, I think I was either in FTO or just out of FTO. And she was talking about the shift she saw in me because I was working night shift. She was staying at my apartment. Um, so I talked when I saw her when I came in from work she was getting up in the morning mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was coming Go, in to go to sleep yeah and she talked about just like I it must have been a bad day I don't remember the conversation um but she mentioned that I came home and she said something to me and um I just looked at her and I said mom I'm still in cop mode don't talk to me and like for me to say it like a little emotional because my mom and I are very close and to I don't remember saying that, you know, but I know there was days that you get tough calls and then you have to go home and be normal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and mom was like, that's when I knew it was starting to affect you. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you don't even think about it. No. And it, because it seems like it's so gradual most oh, of the time. Yeah. It's a cumulative effect of all of the stuff that you see. And then maybe yes. that one call that yeah. just, you know, just kind of pushes you right mm -hmm. to that point. And yeah, no, I mean, there were times, you know, I had the conversation yes. with Rachel, you know, because she used to meet me at the door and the dogs mm -hmm. would be there and everything. And I'm like, just back up, you yeah. know, let, let me get in the house. And yeah. it, you know, it's kind of a dick about it. And it's mm -hmm. like, now it's like, Hell yeah. Meet me at the door. Yes. Dogs, knock me down. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Because this is, you know, being at home is like <coughs> Excuse me. the safe space. Absolutely. You know, this is where I can relax yes. and just, I don't have to be turned on. Mm -hmm. And now I know the difference. Yes. And being able to, you know, and going through, because I went through neurofeedback. Okay. And that helped me immensely mm -hmm. with being able to turn it on and turn it off yeah you know um i'm not saying i'm perfect at it because i'm far from that yeah but it i'm a lot better at it than i used to be yeah yeah it's it's tough well and i think like growing up i was the bubbly kid like much more like i am now like happy smiley just full of energy often <laughs> um <laughs> and then i look back to how i was when i was in the police force and i'm like yeah i was not 
this person. I was different. Mm -hmm. And it's like I look at um, people I went through the academy with or um, friends and that kind of stuff, and I can see the change in them from when I met them. You know, I haven't, I mean, it's not like I was in law enforcement long, but I can, I mean, it doesn't take much. No, it doesn't take long. No. It's, and it's the, the constant for you guys. Exactly. I mean, so firefighters have it a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I mean, people generally are happy to see us when we show up. (laughs) Yes. I don't know of a time, I mean... Normally, people are not happy to see cops when they show up. Um, No, the only time really was, so when I was in Minnesota, one of the, I was not a licensed police officer because I was going through school. Um, So I did a lot of the stuff that other, like I was a community service officer. Mm -hmm. Um, And unlocking cars, like people would smile or send me thank you cards because I unlocked their vehicle. Yeah. At the gas station or whatnot. Yeah. But other than that, um, yeah, I didn't get a lot of smiles. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not very yeah. often. I, I I totally understand that. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, it 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 changes you without even yeah realizing. Well, I mean, it's totally understandable. Absolutely. I mean, it it really is. Yes. And especially if you're not <clears throat> aware of it, cognizant of it. Yeah. And taking steps to guard against it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it is that slow incremental. Yes. You know, and I mean. By the nature of your job, you have to be hyper vigilant. You have yes. to look at, you know, because you're always assessing everything oh, when you're on duty. <laughs> and so it's natural that that stuff starts to carry over into your personal life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that whole turn it on, turn it off thing, it it's harder than people make it seem. And yes. I don't think you're never going to be 100% successful with that. No. No, even now, like six years out, there's times where, like, I still don't sit with my back to the door. Well, <laughs> which um, is it's funny when my husband and I go to dinner because like <laughs> the <laughs> we'll usually get a booth uh-huh. and we'll sit next to each other and the waiter waiter or waitress is like oh that's so cute and we're like no like you don't get it <laughs> like we love each other yes but yeah that's, but no we need to see the door <laughs> yeah yeah like yeah where's the closest cover and concealment <laughs> exactly exactly like I don't always take the spot by the door anymore because. He is still very hyper vigilant, and I have a, been able to kind of release that a little bit. But there's still times, yeah, like with friends who I know were not in law enforcement or veteran or anything. I'll take the seat <laughs> facing the door, <laughs> and they don't even think about it. But yeah, yeah. well, yeah. and most people don't. No, no, that's not even on their radar of things to no, think about. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So yeah, it's uh, it's been interesting to like look back and see where I'm at now, which is yeah. it's pretty awesome. How far I've come, so. Well, that's great. Yeah. It's wonderful to hear. (laughs) Yes. So tell me about Monkey Brain. Yes. Okay, so Monkey Brain Art. um, We are, I will first and foremost say, it is not our therapy. Okay. We we are not therapists. And that's one thing that we're trying to change the mentality of that a little bit. Because, like, everyone's like, oh, art therapy. And we're like, well, no. Like, we're just warriors. We're just people who have been there. People who have seen the, can I swear on this? I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't want to do it and then well, get in I'm, trouble. It's possible I may drop some F-bombs. Okay. So it depends on uh, how heated <laughs> and what topic we get to. <laughs> I get you. But yeah, it's um, the internet. You can say fuck, shit, piss, whatever. Awesome. It's, okay. It's yes, all good. I'm with my people. <laughs> um, so like we've seen the shit. We've been through it. We've experienced it. But art for us has helped us through. So our program where it's open for, we we say warrior. We don't delineate between veteran or first responder or whatnot. So um, veterans, um, it doesn't have to be combat veteran. It can be anybody who served. Um, it doesn't really matter the time because you still go through training. You still go through stuff. Um, so veterans, first responders, and that includes dispatchers, um, correction officers, and then your usual police, fire, EMS. Um, and then we also have caregivers, so um, spouses and family of veterans and first responders. Okay. And then we also added in nurses with the pandemic. So, because they, essentially, I always say, like, pretty much anyone who's been on the front line of whatever. Um, so we do art courses. Um, our flagship program is a nine-week art course, but it's art, meditation, and mindfulness. So our goal is to help our warrior find what they can to calm their mind. 
Um, so monkey brain comes from the Buddhist monks call uns- the unsettled mind monkey mind or monkey brain. So that's kind of where uh, Gary and Trish, the founders, brought the name in. So we're there to use the art meditation mindfulness to help calm their mind um, in whatever form they may find that they like. So we do anything from crayon, uh, coloring with crayons. <laughs> <laughs> Got to start it off. Start it so off easy. Lots of Marines then? Um, we have some, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, we not as many as I would have expected. We have a lot of Air Force for whatever reason. Yeah. Like, the Whenever Air- I went through Valor, there was, I think, a majority of the people in there at the time I was in was were Air Force. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't I don't know. It's like they just flock to us for yeah. what, that's okay. That's cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we start with that. And we Every class is something different. So it could be, we might be painting with acrylic paint. We've done oil paint. We've done watercolor. We've done um, fluid art where it's like you pour it in the, from the red solo cup and you move it around on the canvas and it looks really like organic and cool. Okay. Um, one of our instructors, that's his form of art that he kind of took on. So that's what he teaches. Um, but we also now have, we have a photography course, um, which is super cool. cool. Air Force veteran yeah. photographer. Um, he is amazing. If you go to our website, he did our, um, like, headshots and stuff. Okay. Um, we have an uh, Army veteran. She um, is a TBI survivor, traumatic brain, traumatic brain injury, um, that she got while she was in the service. Um, she was classically trained piano, um, but lost it through her injury. So she, I think it's been, like, 10 or 11 years that she retaught herself how to play and is now a piano teacher. So Dang. I know. She, like... I look at her and I'm like, I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> like, <laughs> she is an amazing human. Like, she's just, I love her. Well, and relearning how to play the piano. Yes. Is. Yes. That's not easy. No. So she's um, finishing out her curriculum right now. And then she's going to put the instructors through um, the course so that she can just kind of do test pilot, see if she needs to change stuff. And then she'll be doing piano classes with us. Cool. Um, we also have. Uh, Matt, beefy. <laughs> so his business is Beefy Wood in, on Instagram if anybody wants to go check out his stuff. It's awesome. Um, he is a disabled vet, Air Force, again. I don't know where all these Air Force people come from, but <laughs> I, I know. Yeah. Um, but he does wood burning. Like that's what he picked cool. up as his form of therapy. Cool. Um, so he's going to do some wood burning classes for us. Um, I'm working with some ceramic studios to see about getting like pottery classes um, I had one of our students actually at class last night. She said, when I get out and when I have a space to do it, I do stained glass. And I'm like, okay. Like, we will take pretty much any form of art. And if we have someone who does it or that's their form they focus on, cool. Let's do a class because there's someone out there who will want to learn how to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to think if there's any other stuff in the works right now. We're trying to find a guitar teacher. So if anybody is a veteran, like you don't have to be a warrior in order to be an instructor. Um, that's just the people we find because it kind of gives them an avenue too. Yeah. Um, but we want to do guitar classes. Um, yeah, there's just little things here and there that um, if someone does a form of art, reach out to us. So, yeah. Cool. Yes. Well, I'll put all your... Yes. Social media stuff. Yes. If you could send me a list of all that. Yeah, I will get I'm you giving that. you homework. I know. <laughs> I know. Monkeybrainart.org. Real easy. <laughs> yes. I'm not going to remember that. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I'll get it to you. I promise. I promise. I promise. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, you know, you've only known this podcast was coming up for like a month and a half. I know. <laughs> and then I got, I got sick. And then. Yeah. Oh, that was not cool. <laughs> uh, no, I can't imagine that it was. No, no. So, but but I'm here, and I will get you everything you need <laughs> after tonight. I promise. Oh, it's all good. Yeah, I'll just bug you until you send it to me. Yes, and do that because, like I said before, I am a procrastinator, and it happens. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so what? But you, yes. So you guys do. A nine-week course, and is it different every week of stuff that you do? Yeah, so it's a nine-week course. It's um, one day a week for two hours, and it's like you come, it's usually six to eight is the usually the time of class, depending on the location, Um, and you come in 
we do a little mindfulness and meditation um, just to kind of get people a little bit calmer in their place. Because art, I mean, if it's something that people haven't done since middle school, high school, whatever, or have never really done art, it can it can produce a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, so we help to kind of calm them. And then each week is a different form of art or a different type. In the art course, it's a different like painting with a different medium or learning how to use like palette knives instead of painting with a brush or, you know, just different ways and different avenues so that hopefully our, our, our thought and our hope is that going through the nine weeks, they'll find something that they enjoy. Right. Like I have one veteran in our class. He's also a board member who I tell him all the time. He's an artist. Like he has talent. He won't admit to it. Whatever. <laughs> He's he'll hear this and probably, I don't know be mad at me but that's okay um but like he doesn't like watercolor he said i tried it in high school i didn't love it then and i said okay try it now um in class if you don't love it awesome find something else you know yeah um but yet another veteran who is in that same class with him um she hasn't she had never tried watercolor and she fell in love with it yeah. like she's like okay i need to figure out how to do this yeah. Well, you know, that just highlights the point of whenever you're talking about mental health in general yeah. of the different treatments, yes, treatment modalities, you know, of talk yeah. therapy, EMDR, you know, whatever it may be. Yes. It, one thing doesn't work for everybody. Mm -mm. Absolutely not. No. And that was why we wanted to add all the different types of art, like photography. We have some people that love photography. Like they take the class and then there's a couple that I'm friends with on Facebook you know and I'll mm -hmm. watch and they're like look at what I just took and I'm like that is a beautiful photo like it has you brought all the skills into it and yeah. they're like well I just love photography now I'm like cool run yeah. with it go yeah you, you know? found a passion go exactly do it. and you don't have to like do anything with it just no. enjoy it go shoot I don't know find your subject you like is it landscape is it flowers is it the sun sets or sunrise if you're an early morning person <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's nothing wrong with the sunrise yeah, I and know. if you get you get up early and you get stuff done then you got the whole day to just lay yes. on the couch if you wanted to or you can watch the sunrise before you go to bed yeah but <laughs> no i know, I know. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's very it's fun to to watch as they find something they enjoy, like find something that clicks with them. Yeah, because you see, like some of our some of our people who walk in, um, I well I will say I'm very much an energy person. I pick up on energy a lot. Um, I can tell when anxiety is like when someone is really struggling, and then you can feel that shift in class when they get it yeah. when it clicks for them, and it's like. Oh, that just that is like my payment. That's all I need, you know. So watching, watching them find that piece, and it can be someone at any time during a class. It could be someone any time during the cohort. We call them cohorts instead of classes. Okay. Um, but it's just when you see that like little bright pop yeah. in, yeah. and then they'll come back the next week and be like, "Look what I did." Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I can't tell you how many people have left class and gone out and bought art supplies the next day because they find that whatever modality, whatever medium that they love and they just want to do it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Like, I'll tell you what apps to use to get coupons at the stores. <laughs> like, you know, like that's the other thing, too, is all of us artists or all of us instructors, we're all artists ourselves. So, like, if they have questions on stuff, we'll help them with whatever technique we like if they like watercolor we send them to our watercolor instructor like questions awesome go ask him um if it's drawing sketching that's what i teach um okay let's sit and if there's something that you're having an issue with let's walk through it cool you know so it's it's fun to to get that interaction mm -hmm. um piece because they know not only are we their teacher we're a warrior too we get it if there's someone who um who might uh, trigger uh, you know whatever that whatever <laughs> word you want to use sure we <laughs> can it, use that word if you want i mean <laughs> i don't know if someone if you notice that someone has uh is having a rough night yeah. like we've been there oh that's the other thing too is 
not only in class are we teaching them art or meditation, we're holding the space for them. Like if you're having a rough night, okay, you're here with people who get it. You're here with, you're in a safe place. Like if you need to talk it out, okay, let's go in the other room and talk. Like there's been a couple of times that I've noticed, like I would pick up that someone is just off, especially if it's towards the end of their cohort, the end of nine weeks. Like we've seen them for six or seven weeks yeah. and there's something just not quite right. And there was one gal, I, I said, Hey, let's step outside if that's okay. Like, I don't say, Hey, we need to go. Yeah. Um, like, <laughs> don't use your cop voice. <laughs> no, no, no. And it's like, Hey, do you want to talk? Let's step outside. And we sat outside for like outside the classroom for half an hour and just talked. And she, I could tell she doesn't necessarily have a place elsewhere where people understand what she might be going through. You know, and it was one of those things that I also was able to pull in the gal who works at the VA and be like, I don't have resources for her. I'm not a veteran. Um, I don't know which route she can go. Can you help us? You know, so she stepped in and kind of gave her some resources. And I saw her last weekend uh, down in the city market and she was happy and thriving. And <laughs> it was amazing because to be able to kind of help them along that journey. Yeah. You know, it's super cool. It fills my heart. <laughs> hey, I yeah. can see that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's they, No, but it's it's great that, you know, what yes. you're doing and that you have a passion for what you're doing. Absolutely. And it's, that's going to show through. Yeah, yeah. And that's my thing is like, obviously it's a nonprofit. So a lot of us do the classes, do the teaching, you know, free. We volunteer. But my payment is to watch them. Or when we have our graduation to see those pictures at the end, because we always take a graduation picture, like a group shot of mm -hmm. like, here's cohort one, here's cohort two. And it's going back and looking at the pictures and seeing the smiles on the faces. Like yeah. there's a few people I remember when they came to the first class, you know, very shut off, like new mm -hmm. place, don't know these people, don't yeah. know this location. I'm yeah. going to sit here head down. Yeah. I'm uh, going to do art. Therapy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like they're going to make me draw in color. Yeah. You know, um, I remember there was one guy at one of our classes. He like the first two or three classes he came and head down like hands over. And then the next few like I we do pictures each class um, and I'll usually post them on social media of like, hey, here's what our warriors did, especially if there's a piece that is just amazing because talents come out that these people do not understand <laughs> or realize they had. But then like you start looking at the pictures later classes of some of the cohorts and it's like, you see the smile starting, you see how interactive they become. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of cohorts at the end, they'll be, they'll be exchanging phone numbers. And like we have a alumni group on Facebook and we'll get them in there and they'll be like chatting back and forth. And it's, it, it's fun to watch the community grow as well. Yeah. Yeah. Not only to watch them open up, but yeah, to yeah. basically find their tribe again. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so, so you, two birds, one stone. Yes. <laughs> well, and that's what we always say, like, you don't have to be an artist to come to class. You know, you can come for if meditation is something you want to start to explore or if you just need to find your people again. Yeah. Okay. So what's the split with art and meditation? Like, how does a class run? So usually we'll do about a half hour um, of the mindfulness and meditation and it's not like we don't sit cross-legged on the floor and like. <laughs> I'm out. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> well, and we, we let people know, like, if if your meditation type or your mindfulness type is to walk, okay, get up and walk in the back of the classroom. If your meditation type is to sit there but have eyes open because you need to know what's going on, that's cool. Sit with your eyes open. Um, but I will say usually by about the third or fourth class, you see people like, okay, we're going to go ahead and do our meditation. Now it's usually a guided meditation, but you'll see them kind of like sit, sit in their seats and like get the grounded. And, and then I, I think by about class four, most people are closing their eyes because we hold the space for right. them. Um, there's always the person who's facilitating the, um, the meditation. And then I don't usually do the meditation. So I'll stand like we stand by the doors. We hold the door. We hold the space for people. Like you don't have to worry about something happening cause we've got you. So it's, um, it's pretty cool to watch them be able to kind of release the control with that. Um, but yeah, we'll do the half hour and then we go into the artwork. So 
Um, sometimes they'll finish their whatever pieces they're working on. Sometimes they won't, but it just kind of depends on what the, what the process is that night. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Yes. Sounds very cool. It is. It's super, I mean, it's fun too. You know, you can, and it's, it's interesting too, cause in class you can feel like when there's stuff in society going on, you can feel it in class cause everybody is just carrying the tension or carrying oh, yeah. the heaviness. And if we're able to help kind of release that a little bit so that they're lighter when they go home, that's awesome. Yeah. You know? Well, and that's sorely needed. Yes. Yes. With the 24 hour news cycle <laughs> and the way social media is. Yeah. I mean, you're just bombarded with stuff. Absolutely. Constantly. Absolutely. On top of the stuff that most of us are already carrying anyway. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's interesting to watch the shift and feel the shift, but it's pretty cool. So yeah, that's yes. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited for you guys. Thank you. It's <laughs> um, yeah, we're only what a year and a half old, and yeah. classes. Our first class started uh, June of 21, so we just hit our year of doing classes, um, which is really crazy to think back. Because like when we do events and stuff, we'll do vendor events, not vendor events. I don't know. Like events to get monkey the word of monkey brain out. Yeah. And when we talk about it, people are like, wait, you've only been around like a year? <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a lot yeah. we've done in that time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But so. I mean, that's, you're hitting the ground running. Exactly. And not just, oh, uh, well, we'll, when this happens, we'll do this. Yes. No, no. no. Let's just make it happen. Yeah. And we're very much, I mean, you got a lot of type A's. Yeah. Um. <laughs> No. no, not at all. <laughs> not in that community. <laughs> no. So it's like, oh, we want to do this. Okay, cool. Well, it'll be done next week. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So um, one thing I should t say, too, is we don't have a, an office. So all of our classes right now, we have three different locations. Um, we work through the VA. So we're at the Honor Annex, one of their, um, it's not at the main hospital, but it's one of their other locations. Um, we work with the Smithville American Legion, so we can serve our northern people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and God's then, country, as we say. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's Minnesota. Um, <laughs> that's, that's Canada. Canada no. South. <laughs> no, no, I've never, okay, I've never been to Canada. I live closer here to where my parents are than my parents to Canada, so just to give a little reference. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, um, so... The VA Honor Annex, uh, Smithville American Legion, and then Veterans Community Project, the tiny homes. Mm -hmm. um, actually, in about a couple weeks, we start classes there, and we'll be their art program. Okay. So um, three locations. Um, people can go on the website and see. I always put. I always have the dates up of when the next classes are, so they can register for it. Um, there's a link online to go ahead and register, um, and they can put which location they'd like to go to. So that way I know. And then I'll give them a call and roster them in and all that stuff so cool yes so sign up people <laughs> yeah no kidding <laughs> no kidding um and like i say it, it oh oh i didn't even say like this really big thing it's free what i know <laughs> i know the hell I you always, say i always forget that part um, i was thinking for the low low price of five payments of 99.99 or something yeah, no. no it is free for all of our warriors like they don't they don't have to bring anything they don't have to pay anything it's all funded by sponsorships donations um all that good stuff so it is a program that they can come to um the only thing we ask is an open mind you know because you may learn stuff or learn about stuff that you have never been exposed to so like a lot of people walking in now, not so much. Um, people are starting a little bit more with the mindfulness and meditation because it's kind of becoming a bigger thing as yeah. mental health becomes a bigger thing, which is really awesome to see. Um, but I mean, we still have some people who come in who have never meditated and don't practice any type of mindfulness. So we just say, keep an open mind. If we usually with the meditation part, we'll do a few different types or a few different forms like okay cool if this one this week doesn't work for you just keep an open mind and try next week so yeah. yeah well I think that's important especially whenever you're you know you change from week to week yes. on what type of art you're doing yes it's important for people to remember to remain flexible exactly yeah and some like and that's part of it too is we don't tell them what's coming next week number one because Sometimes we have to switch it around if an instructor is not able to come. Mm -hmm. um, but also, if, like, 
like our uh, board member say, if he doesn't like watercolor and he knows that's coming next week, he's not going to show up to class. Yeah. They're going to be like, well, I don't like that. I don't want to do that. That causes a lot of anxiety for them. Mm -hmm. They just won't show up. Yeah. So it's like, and we have we have people who like try and sneak of like, what ex like what kind of materials are we going to use? Like, yeah. no, like you'll use canvas. <laughs> <laughs> You know, or you'll use paper, <laughs> yeah. but we won't tell them what it is that we're using or what we're doing because like come to class next week and you'll find out. Yeah. And most people in our community, if you say, yeah, you'll find out next week, they're like, oh, fine, I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Damn it. Now I got to know. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, yes. <laughs> I, yes. We'll neither confirm nor deny. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know. You can't get away from it. <laughs> uh, no. No matter how much healing you have, that's always a piece of it. So. Well, I, you know, I think that's personality, though, more than anything else. Yeah. I think it's it's that's a personality trait that a lot of us share. Is yes. We want to know. Yes. You know. Yeah. And if we don't know, we'll we'll fix it so that we know. Yeah. Yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And and we'll problem solve until you tell us we're right. Exactly. <laughs> Yes. Well, and that's what we talk about, you know, on the fire department is yeah. that's what we do is we problem solve. Absolutely. So that's 99.999% yes. of our job because no yes. scene that we ever go into is exactly the same. No, no house fire is the same. No EMS calls the same. No car no. wrecks the same. You could have the exact same two model vehicles mm -hmm. hit in the exact same way. Yeah. You're not going to be able to cut the people out the same way. No. Well, I mean, you, I say no like I know I don't. But Yeah. <laughs> it's just there's so many variables yes so you have to adapt well and that so gary um our uh, gary and trish are our founders husband and wife i don't know if i talked about them at all <laughs> I talked you talked about, about gary a little bit a little yeah you so, know you creepy knocked on his window yeah well yeah that's right <laughs> that's right um but he's air force veteran mm -hmm. um disabled veteran like you look at him and you wouldn't know but that's i know a lot of veterans like they have yeah. stuff you just don't not visible yeah well um, that's the I don't want to interrupt <laughs> you, but no, no, you're good. That's the thing, especially with mental health TBI. Yes, yes. it's not a visible injury. No, 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 no. So, and I think that's where some of the stigma, yes, for mental health, and yes, I mean, I wouldn't, I would hope there's not that for TBI. I don't know, but I think it depends what they're, uh, what they show with it. Yeah. So, yeah. but there's where a lot of that stigma comes from is yes. because it's not like, oh, I can see you you broke your arm yeah. or you're missing a leg or something yeah. like, like I can see that. So I know exactly where, you know, those scars on the inside, they're there, they're there. Yeah. And I can tell you about it, but mm, PS, you're probably not going to want to hear about yeah. how they, <laughs> and how you, they came. Yeah. And you, you're not going to understand. No, never. No, no. Um, but he's, so he's air force veteran. Um, Trish is a certified yogi. So she does a lot of her mindfulness and meditation. Um, where was I going with this? Why was I going to talk about them? Um, because they founded the program. They founded the program, but they I know, but I had a point of why I was going to, oh, oh, our motto, like Gary and I. So um, it never fails. There's like, we can't find an art supply or, oh crap, there's seven people here and we only got ready for six. Mm -hmm. Our philosophy is adapt and overcome. Mm -hmm. Like that is... That's what you do when you're a veteran. That's what you do when you're a first responder. You problem solve, you figure it out, and you make it work. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's funny because we'll, like, something will throw it off or extra people are there or, oh, crap, we needed this art supply, but we got out something else. Mm -hmm. We just look at each other and it's like, adapt and overcome. Okay. Yeah. Move on. Figure it out. Yeah, exactly. No so, one gets red tonight. <laughs> no. No. And, I mean, it, it can happen. It's once in a while. Like, even it's funny, too, because even if Gary and I or another instructor will walk in, like, we all we know each other well enough that we can look at each other and go, mm, walk outside, try that again. Like, take a deep breath and then come back in. Mm -hmm. But there's, sorry. No, you're um, fine. There, there's so <laughs> many times that, um, like, Gary and I will even talk. We need the meditation some days just as much as the people who walk into class. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Where it's like. Why wouldn't you? Because we're the instructors. And we're the yeah, I know, I know. Because I hold myself <laughs> to a higher standard, and I, <laughs> I went through treatment, so I'm better. Yes. Yeah, no, no, we're <laughs> we know that we like, mm -mm. like, and I can tell if there's uh, days I don't meditate, or 
I had I had COVID. P.S. That's why we had to reschedule. Um, <laughs> and I couldn't go to the gym for a week and a half. And then when I got to the gym, like I could not breathe very well. But mm-hmm. it's one of those things, and I have made it a thing in my life now. He has CrossFit. I know whatever jokes you want to make. Um, but I know I'm taking it easy on you. <laughs> it's okay. I have pretty thick skin. Um, but I know if I don't do it, I notice. Mm-hmm. And it's the days, there have been days, even in the last couple of months, where it's like, I don't want to get out of bed today. Mm-hmm. But no, I signed up for the class. I registered for it. I just need to get in the car and get to the gym. Yep. Or I just need to get to class and find one of my other guys to hold the door because I need the meditation today. And we're all pretty good about it of like, oh, yeah, totally cool. I got you. You know? That's one of the nice things, too, of, like, you get it, you understand. Yeah. Of It might be, like, I might just be going through some shit right now in life outside. Yeah. So. You mean outside life doesn't stop? No. The dumpster fire (laughs) burns consistently. (laughs) There is no putting it out. Oh. Like, as much as the fire. Yeah. I try not to make fun of firefighters or second responders. Um, Oh. (laughs) I know. I see what you I, did there. <laughs> yes. But like there is no amount of wa- water to put out that dumpster fire of life sometimes. Oh, yeah, no. No. It's no. You, you know that old and I've referenced it before, the 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 speech in Rocky Balboa. Yes. The nobody's going to hit as hard as life and it'll yes. keep hitting. And yeah. Yes. It, there's a reason why that speech is epic. It's yes. because it's true. It is so true. Yes. And you can either sit there on the ground Mm -hmm. and just take it and feel sorry for yourself. Yeah. Or you can get up and do something about it. Yes. I always say give yourself five minutes to feel sorry and then get up and do something. You can do that. (laughs) You can give yourself five minutes. Yes. Yeah. But then once the timer goes off, like, okay, now I need to get up and do something. Yeah. Otherwise, some people would sit there forever. But it's the people who don't give them. I, My belief, it's the people who don't give themselves that chance to, like, feel it process it and just shove it down bottle it up oh that works wonderfully for a very short time (laughs) (laughs) or until you retire (laughs) (laughs) yeah usually it doesn't last that long no no because there's symptoms along the way shall we say absolutely absolutely divorce alcoholism not alcoholism divorce (laughs) been there yeah 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 so yeah no uh put putting it in a box and locking it away Mm mm-hmm not not the greatest recipe no. for uh no, no, no. <laughs> for long term good mental health. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you you know, you talk to someone in law enforcement or first responder or whatever and they're like, "Yeah, I've been divorced." It's like, "Yeah, me too." Yeah. Uh, uh. Mm-hmm. What did you do to try and do it make sure it doesn't happen the next time? Oh, I don't know. Like <laughs> Yeah. There's a reason why like everybody's a part of it. Yeah. See what you can do, you know. Yeah. Sorry, I picked divorce cuz been there. Been there twice, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah, checked that off my list. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yes. Starter marriage, <laughs> next marriage, final marriage. There you go. Yes, yes. So I know, but it, and it's it makes me laugh too because it's like uh, those of us in the field, we just laugh. Like yeah, well because it's unfortunately and it's I super know. sad. It's normal. It is. It's like okay, what's the divorce rate for? those career fields oh it's like something it's it's ridiculous yes ridiculously higher than the national average it's like 93 or 97 percent or something like that yeah when i was so my first job when i was a community service officer right not fully in not licensed anything they sent me to a training and it was like dealing with trauma in law enforcement okay cool and there i will never remember or i never forget the statistic it was like if you're in, well, it was law enforcement because it was all cops. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're in law enforcement, like your divorce, the divorce rate is 93%. Okay, cool. Like, I'm sure it's different now. But yeah. if you're a woman in law enforcement, it's 100%. And I was like, wait wow. a minute. And I was like, well, I mean, <laughs> I got that down because I was going through my first divorce as mm-hmm. I was at that class. And I was like, check. <laughs> okay. Okay, don't have to worry about that one. Oh, I know. Shit. <laughs> I know. I'm like, okay, well. I guess I'm part of that 100%. Like, yeah. that's not cool, but okay. Oh. Yeah, it's never fun to go, man, I'm a statistic. <laughs> yeah, but then I look back and go, well, yeah, because I didn't have the ways to 
to deal with what I was going through. Like I was in the academy working my first job at that time. Mm-hmm. My ex-husband was not law enforcement. I don't know. We didn't really talk about it much. I don't know if he had an issue with me going into a male dominated field because there's not a lot of women in law enforcement. Like there is not more now than when I went through. Yeah. Um, but we didn't have the tools, you know, to work through it. Yeah. So, um, and my husband and I now we have some tools, which thankfully he's also law enforcement. So we get each other yeah. a lot more. But um, I think like just having the toolbox really yeah. helps. Well, tremendously. You have the toolbox, but you have to pull the tools out yes. and use them. Yes. Because yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of people with the toolbox who yeah. don't use it. That is true. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it can be trying at times. Uh, yes. Yes, it can. <laughs> yes. But it's worth it. Exactly. Yeah. And when you have the partner who is worth it to working, you have the hard, hard conversations. Yeah. You know, it's shitty. But, yeah. but it's also, we're both cops. We're problem solvers. We're like, this is shitty. Okay, what do we do to fix it? Yeah. <laughs> Let's fix it. Exactly. So it doesn't happen again. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I just posted a thing on Instagram about, and it's not quite off topic, but it's kind of about, you know, courage and doing, the, <laughs> yeah. you know, being brave and doing the hard thing. Oh, yeah. You know, we run into burning buildings. We run towards the sound of gunfire. Yeah. Uh, we put ourselves in harm's way. Absolutely. Yet we won't look at our partner. Yeah. Or the people on our crew and talk to them about their mental health. Oh, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right? Yeah. What is stopping us? Exactly. But then we, like, if someone, heaven forbid, decides to end their life, we're like, wow, well, I didn't see it coming. Yeah. Like, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's think about this for a sec. Like, what do we go through every day? Yeah. And how often do people talk about it? Yeah. We don't. We make jokes or... Exactly. We do whatever. But Mm -hmm. having a serious conversation, and especially because... Yeah. Look, the people that are in your station or that Mm -hmm. you ride with on a daily basis, you know them. Oh, yeah. You can't help but know them. No. I mean, you spend more time with them than your spouse often. Yeah. (laughs) So... You know when something's going on. Oh, yeah. You just don't want to see it. Yes. And you don't want to talk about it. Exactly. Now, whether that's from fear or you feel like you don't know what to say Mm -hmm. or, you know, if you feel like, oh, you know, if I do talk to them about it, they're going to feel differently about me or maybe Mm -hmm. I'm just going to piss them off or whatever. Who cares? They get mad at you. Fine. Exactly. But at least you're bringing it to their attention. You're letting (laughs) them know that you give a shit. Yes. Yeah. You know, and... What's the alternative? They're going to be mad at you for a couple of days and then realize, oh, maybe I do need to, mm-hmm. you know, get some help or even just talk about it. And that solves the problem. Yeah. Because not everybody needs to go through 30 no. day inpatient treatment Mm-mm. to fix whatever they got going on. Sometimes yeah. it's a conversation just getting stuff off their chest. Yep. And OK, so they're mad at you for a week and then everything was cool. Or, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, you didn't talk to them. And then they took their life a month later and... Yeah. Mm. And then it's always the, well, what ifs? Yeah. You know, which suck. Yeah. You don't... That is not... You're never going to problem solve that out. No. (laughs) That will always be... It doesn't matter how much therapy you go through. Yeah. (laughs) There will always be that that, that part, you know? Yeah. It's... Yeah. The hard conversations are hard. But I will say, like, so Battle Within um, went through that program and now I not only have the tool... I have the people that I can go to and go, okay, I have this hard conversation. I need to have. I personally know I am a highly emotional person. Like I, if we are talking and we get frustrated at each other, I'm like, screw it. And I shut down. So I have those people who I also know are highly emotional people and go, how do you do it? Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips? Because this is a conversation that needs had and I want to do it successfully and keep my emotions leveled out, you know, and I have have a couple of my guys that it's, I will message them and go, I need to do this. Can you please tell me how you do it? Because I know some of them have worked through some really hard stuff. So even having, having the tools, mm-hmm. but also being able to be okay and vulnerable to reach out to people and say, I need to use this tool. Can you help me? You know? Yeah. Is. And it, having those people that you're comfortable yes. to reach out to. Yeah. And not just having them, 
like I've had them for two years since I went through the battle within. Yeah. But knowing that I can reach out to them and they're not going to look differently at me. Yeah. Because I reach out and say, hey, I need help. Yeah. You know, it's, ugh, it cuts at the pride a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, and that's where we got to put our own ego in check. Exactly. Because exactly. it's not about you and it's not about yes. me. It's about that person. Exactly. You know? Well, and if it's something that it's like a hard conversation to work on something you want to make better. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at the long term of like, I want to make it better, but in order to make it better, I have to do this. Yeah. And being okay with doing this. And if you don't know how to do it, asking people, help me, guide me. What do I do to do this so I can have the better? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I know. It's it's taken me a while to get here, but like now that I'm here, I'm not going back, you know, because where was it? Like, what yeah. good was that? Exactly. What? Get another divorce? <laughs> Check. <laughs> 300%. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, uh, yeah. No, I no, love it. Yeah. Not happening. So how many can you rack up? <laughs> no, let's not. Let's, let's not. Because I, I'm the challenge accepted type. Not taking this challenge. <laughs> I know, right? Not taking this. Yeah. Challenge. Okay, I take it back. That, that was. It was a joke. I know. And see, Just that's like funny. whatever. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. No, that's. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um. Thank you so much for coming on. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. Yes. And um really interested in what you guys are doing and I wish you yeah. the best and all success. I do have one other thing I should plug sure. really quick. So one thing we do, um, we do an art festival every, every fall, mm -hmm. every fall. It's our second one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been it's, years. Yes. Um, this is an event. You it, best better show up. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> um, but it is the Kansas City United Art Festival. So okay. we have, um, it's at the World War One Museum out on the North Lawn. We're going to be out by the flag. Okay. Little for looking the city. Um, the art festival part will have warrior artists, so people who have gone through class or warriors who maybe haven't gone through class but are already artists. Um, mm -hmm. We'll have warrior artists and community artists. So our goal with this is not only have our warrior artists found their tribe through class, but now if they're wanting to pursue art, they can find a tribe in the art community. Okay. So um, we're going to have the artists. Um, we'll have food trucks kids activities the other big thing that we are doing is we are going to have um we call it the warrior support village mm -hmm. so it's nonprofits, companies um, service organizations who have services or help veterans first responders caregivers all in one place okay so that way they can come it's like the whole thing of if art's not your thing cool go talk to the guys with the gym if that's not it cool go talk to the people who might do equine therapy Right. If that's not it, cool. Go find something else. Yeah. So, um, yeah, October 8th, World War One Museum, 10 to 6, outside. Come. Okay. It'll be fun. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. And we're awesome. looking for more artists. If there are artists out there listening, um, they can go to our website and the application form's there. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, you guys heard it here first. Yes. Probably not. I'm sure you probably posted on, it on Instagram. And it's, this won't come out for like three weeks. So. That's okay. Hey, it'll be right getting closer to yeah, the yeah. event. So. We'll, yeah. We'll make sure we put up a flyer or something yeah. if you want to send me one. So uh, I should have brought one. I would just send it to me in the email that you're going to send. I have one in my car. <laughs> I don't. I, I always have this. Well, then I have to take car. a picture of it and then oh, put I'll it on. It yeah. I'll send it to you with the other list of things. Okay. It actually might be on the email Gary sent me. I'll have to look because there was a flyer attached yes, to it. Yes. So, you have it. I don't have to send it. Well, <laughs> don't think you're off the hook. I know. <laughs> You'll get the rest. I promise. Okay. Pinky, <laughs> I pinky swear. <laughs> All right. Well, yes. Katie, thank you yes. so much for coming on. Absolutely. Monkey Brain Art. I think you guys are doing yeah. wonderful things. Yes. Um, so, yeah, if you guys want to check it out, um, what's the website again? Monkey Brain Art. Dot org. Monkey, org monkeybrainart.org and yes. i'll put links in the description and all that stuff just like i normally do so yes. um yeah check them out mm -hmm. um and we'll end this episode like we do every single one of them uh if you are struggling reach out there are resources out there for you um 
hey, this might be one of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you know somebody that's struggling, do the hard thing. Yeah. Have just a tiny little bit of courage and uh, talk to them. Let them know you care. Let them know there are resources out there if they need resources. Um, so, yeah. And if anybody out there needs resources, send me an email. Mm-hmm. The email's on the thing. It's the washdownpodcast at gmail.com. I'm more than willing to help. So, yeah. Send me an email. Let me know. All right. Have a good one, and we'll see you next time.